What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today I want to talk about running the Gecko Trading Bot or the Paper Trader from Command Line. This is like a mini series of a three-part series where the last two videos I cover in the previous two days were backtesting from Command Line and importing from Command Line. If you have not watched those two videos yet, I, s I recommend you watch those two videos first just so that you get a better understanding of how the command line for the Gecko Trading Bot works. So let's dive right into it. So now that you should be already having set up backtesting and importing via command line, these are the things you need to do. So first thing is you gotta make a copy of the config.js file and call it config-trader.js or whatever you want to call it as. Again, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, it's easier to have three separate config files because then that way you have you have it ready pretty much to do whatever you need to do. So once you make the copy, then you go ahead and uh, set up the exchange and trade pair in config.watch if you haven't already done so from previous videos. So again, the config.watch is really is pretty much at the very top of the config file. So after that, you want to set up the candle writer so that will store the market data to disk. So then that way you can go back and back test it for trouble troubleshoot trade execution issues at least that's my understanding that's my preference you guys don't have to do this but I believe there is a value to setting the candle writer to true so the next thing is the paper trader to true and config that trader to false if you're paper trading so just like the UI interface for gecko trading bot so let's say that you go to live geckos for example so let's say you want to start a live gecko in here you there is the option again it's a paper trader and the and the trading bot so you have the same exact option in the config file. So you want to set the paper trader up so that you can just test to make sure that you're trading, test to make sure that your config file is up correctly. I mean, I definitely suggest you do that first just to make sure that everything's working properly. Or well, the other thing is maybe you want to set up the paper trader to see if you have other functions that you're setting up, like the email configuration is working properly. You can set up the paper trader as well to do that. So if you're doing the paper trader, you would set it to true and the config that traded to false. But if you're actually setting an actual trading bot, you want to set the paper trader to false and config that traded to true. So you don't get a conflicting output by having both the paper trader and the uh, config that trader enabled. So after you do that, you want to go into uh, set up paper trader or the trader. So again, if you go into the trader section in here, so this is the paper trader section. So it's very similar to the UI. You definitely you want to set up the currency. You want to set up how many, the asset and currency, the fees, and the slippage if there is any. And uh, the trader section is where you have to set up the key and the secret that you get from your the exchange's API. So whether it's from GDAX, uh, from GDAX, Binance, Polonius, Kraken, whatever it is, they have the information. You need to set up the key and the secret. Some exchanges require you to use the username and passphrase as well but other exchanges don't. It depends on what exchange you're using. So these are the things that need to be filled out if you're actually using Gecko to live trade. So once you do that, you want to set debug to true and add the config that silence to false for Gecko to tell you if it is able to stitch together historical data and live data to eliminate the warm-up period. So again, this is the crucial part. So this is the whole reason why, I mean, besides all the additional functionality that you get from the command line, if you're not setting those up, this is the main reason why to run the command line is to avoid the warm-up period. And to do that, you just have to go to the general settings, set the config.debug to true, and you'll add this additional line here, config.silent equal to false. At least that's why I read from the forum. I, I added this line and it doesn't cause any issues. So I think this is a correct setup. You guys can let me know if it's wrong if you don't really need to config.silent equal false. But that's why I read in the forums. So once you do that, you can run Gecko. As they say in the instructions right here, you just set it to node gecko dash dash config config.js or config dash trader.js if you have named your config file the way I have. Once you have it running, there's two possibilities. One is it's not able to stitch together the historical data and the and the live data. And what happens is it'll ignore your historical data and it'll just download from the exchange until it fills up the um, the candles necessary for the warm-up period and you see it right away right here so if you scroll down in here it'll tell you unable to stitch 
data sets. And then it says not seeding locally available data to the trading method. It depends on the warm-up period that you set. In this case, only set 30 minutes, which is really not accurate. <laughs> So because, again, the ADX bull bear strategy requires, I think, minimum the, ADX, the SMA long to be 200 to 250. So in this case, I didn't set up correctly on the warm-up period. So again, you have to make sure you set up the warm-up period here in the trading advisor. So instead of setting it to 30, and make sure that you set it to the correct amount. So let's say that whatever your strategy needs, that's what you should set it as. So but anyway, in this case, it just ignore the data, but then it told you specifically that it ignored the data and it's supposedly running without the necessary warm-up. At least that's what I'm hoping it did. But again, this only happened because I didn't run the import process twice. Again, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, you want to make sure that you run the import process once from when you get the data set from XFFF to the certain end date that it has for that data set. That end date, that end point on, you want to get from that end point on to your current minute. So once you do that in your input, it'll, it'll do that, but then you also have to do it one more time because you're still missing X amount of minutes, probably around like 11 to 15 minutes. As you see here, this is what's happened. So I'm missing about 11 minutes of data. The second input, again, you have to make sure that you run it from the most from the most recent candle that it ended at. Now the second import, you have to make sure you set the import to where your most recent import ended. Otherwise, it's just gonna import on top of your existing data and it's going to take again that same amount of duration about 15 to 20 minutes maybe a little longer at this point just because an additional 11 minutes have passed so on and so forth so if you did it correctly and import it twice this is what should happen in here so and here again you have available local data from three minutes ago to two minutes ago see this is how much the historical data you have is missing you're only missing two minutes of data rather than a whole 11 minutes so at this point in time Gecko can then try to match it up and is able to say full stitching data sets, full history locally available, seeding the trading method with all required historical candles. So in this case, it's seeding the 30 minutes of historical data locally, not using any of the exchange data at all. And then that way, you are completely avoiding the warm-up period. So now there's one problem though, with running the trading bot using the command line interface. Everything is piped out to standard out which is basically the screen the terminal itself so there is no logging whatsoever so in order for it to log you actually have to save whatever is on the terminal you could do that and then save it especially in a mac you can say edit copy and save into a text file or you actually have to pipe it out so my understanding of how things work for piping out is something like this so you would do something like this at least that's at least that's my understanding of how piping out works for the ms dos days I'll probably just update, you probably want to look up how it works for Mac or Linux or how, whatever platform you're using to pipe out to the text file. Then that way you can have a historical data of when each of the trades happen. There's definitely additional plugins that will let you actually write this, write the trading data to either a Google Sheet or to a, a separate document. I will be covering that in a future video. But for now, at least this is a way for you to set up the Gecko Trading Bot and have it run as soon as possible rather than having it wait through the warm-up period. So that's my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.